Greetings, everyone. I'm speaking to you from the USS Gerald R. Ford, home of the Iron Nine watch team, the first all-female enlisted bridge watch section on a carrier. And earlier this year, I attended the USS Constitution change of command, where Commander Billy Farrell became the first woman to assume command in the ship's 225-year history, from the American Revolution to the 21st century. The history of our fleet and our nation has been strengthened by the contributions of women serving in our Navy and our Marine Corps. For many years, the contribution of women warriors remained hidden from view, yet their courage and their sacrifice often made the difference between victory and defeat throughout our nation's history. Recognized or unrecognized, they were trailblazers. We recognize women like Deborah Sampson, who many others, who as early as the American Revolutionary War circumvented the barriers to serve by disguising themselves as men. It's also the story of Loretta Walsh, a sailor who in 1920 became the first woman to legally enlist in the military and eventually became the Navy's first female chief petty officer. Trailblazers like Otha Mae Johnson, the first woman to enlist in the Marine Corps, and Lorma Mollock, who in 2018 became the first African-American woman promoted to Brigadier General in the Marines. And it continues today with the stories of women like Captain Amy Bauschmidt, who commands USS Abraham Lincoln, currently deployed and operating in the South China Sea. And Lieutenant Commander Kyla Barron, who serves as a mission specialist on the NASA SpaceX Crew-3 on the International Space Station. As we mark Women's History Month, I ask you to remember all the women who served in the past and thank all who serve amongst us today. There are now over 85,000 women in our Navy and over 16,000 in our Marine Corps. 20,000 serve as civilians in our Department of the Navy. Today, women operate in every domain around the globe, but many of you can remember a time when that wasn't the case. Even while it was known that women were deployed to combat zones, women were restricted by law from serving in certain combat operational positions until 2013. And it wasn't until 2016 that all career restrictions were lifted for women in the service. This inequity did not just impact women in combat roles. In 1975, it took an order from President Ford, the namesake of the ship, to open our service academies to women. I was privileged to attend the U.S. Naval Academy with the first female graduates and served in the fleet with some of the first female surface warfare officers and naval aviators. And I'm very proud to have commanded one of the first Arleigh Burke destroyers with a mixed gender crew. For decades, these women were held back by others, arguing that changes would weaken our force and detract from the mission. And unfortunately, at times today, we still hear from some of those same negative voices. But time and time again, those voices are proven wrong. Throughout my career, and today as your secretary, I have seen firsthand what you all know. From the E-ring to the air wing, and from the deck plate to the battleground, with women in our ranks, our force is stronger today than it's ever been. But our work is unfinished. To protect our nation, in the coming years, we must recruit, retain, mentor, and promote the very best of all of our nation has to offer. Together, we must continue building a more inclusive force defined by a war-fighting culture built on leadership, dignity, and respect that welcomes and encourages the service of everyone who is able and willing to serve. We must listen to our people and respond where we fall short. We will strengthen our promotion pipelines to recognize and value the service of all our enlisted and commissioned personnel, male and female. We will ensure our policies respect the needs of dual service and single parent families. And we will do everything in our power to ensure all who serve can do so in an environment that is safe and free from sexual harassment or violence or extremism of any kind. That is how we will truly honor our trailblazers, continue to support the legacy of empowered women, and build the strength of our Navy and our Marine Corps. So to all the extraordinary women who power our Navy and Marine Corps today, and those who honor them too, thank you for your service. I am truly honored to serve at your side as your Secretary of the Navy.